This Plinko feature video will cover auditing. Plinko offers a built-in audit system that uses linked to SQL's data context object tracking. Whenever submit changes is called, Plinko automatically aggregates all the changes being made and uses them to populate an easy-to-read and serializable audit log object that is exposed on the data context. Class and property auditing is configurable using the entity metadata classes. This demonstration will be done using the latest tracker sample application, which is available for download at codesmith.googlecode.com. The only modification that has been made to the solution is that I've added a new unit test for this video. Plinko auditing is configured using the entity metadata classes. When configuring the auditing, entities are inclusive while their properties are exclusive. This means that to audit an entity, you must add the audit attribute to the top of its metadata class. Meanwhile, to prevent the auditing of one of its properties, you must add the not audited attribute to the top of that property. So in the user class, which is audited, the create date and the modified date are not going to be audited because their properties are flagged with not audited. So thanks to the metadata class, configuring auditing with Plinko is pretty simple. Now, to demonstrate auditing with Plinko, we're going to step through a series of submit changes with a few entities and see what the audit logs look like. So let's go ahead and run this unit test. And let's bring that down a little bit. So here we've created a new user and we've told the data context to insert it on submit. So when we submit changes, db.lastaudit is immediately populated with an audit log of the changes that just previously occurred. So if we look inside the audit, we can see there was one entity and that entity had an action of insert. It was of type user and we can see all the keys and properties of that entity that were modified. Because of just being inserted, it's considering that all the properties have been updated. And if we look at any one of these properties, we can see not only the current value, but also the original value for that property prior to the submit. But let's continue and see a better example. Now with this next submit, we've updated the user by updating its comment, and we've added a new task. So we should have one update and one submit statement. So we submit changes and look back at the audit. We can see there are now two entities. And also, by the way, on this audit, you can see the date that the audit or that the submit took place. Right now at 6 o'clock. And you can see the username who was logged into the computer that made the change. In this case, me. So when we look at the entities for this change, we have one submit and we're submitting a new task. Again, it thinks that all eight properties are new, and so it has them listed. But we also have an action of update against our user where we change the comment. If we open that up and look at the altered properties, we'll see the comment, which is of type string, and we'll see the current value, and we'll see the original value. So these audits, again, are keeping track of every entity that is being flushed out with the submit change, the type of update that's occurring against the entity, and all the values of all the properties, both new and old. Also, this audit log is serializable using our 2xml serialize method. So if we write that out to the trace, and then we open up our log, we can see this nice XML document oops, of our audit log. We can see as an audit, we can see the list of entities that were updated and all of their values. So this is an easy way to take this audit and store it somewhere else in case perhaps you want to log them. So now the last example we're going to do is we're going to delete our user and our task to clean out the database from this unit test. So when we submit changes again and look at the audit, we're going to see there are two entities that have been altered, and the actions this time are delete, again, against the user and the task. And once again, it's showing us all the properties on both. So that's how simple auditing is with Plinko. You just configure which entities and which properties are going to be audited using the metadata, and then automatically on submit changes, the audit log is going to be created, and you can access that and use it however you like. That concludes this video over auditing. We hope you found it to be both helpful and informative. To watch additional Plinko feature videos, please visit us at Plinko.com. My name is Tom DuPont. Thank you for using Plinko.